One of the biggest battles in Texas politics will happen next year. We're talking about redistricting. That's the process of drawing voter districts after the results of this year's census. But Texas lawmakers are already working on the plan. They've been holding committee hearings around the state to get input from the public. This week, the Texas House Redistricting Committee will hold two hearings in the greater Dallas area. Representative Cheryl Cole is on the committee. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. So the redistricting committee has been holding these field hearings for a few months now. What have you been hearing from people that go to this uh, type of committee? I mean, who's interested in this? Oh, lots of people. I mean, there's community organizations like the League of Women Voters that are just dedicated to making sure that voters, you know, have uh, ample participation in the process, but there's also a lot of college students or just people that are very familiar with the gerrymandering that we've had to go through in this state and want to see something done about it. Yeah, what have you taken away from the hearings so far since you've been through a few now? Well, different parts of the state have different levels of concern. If you are losing population, you of course do not want to lose representation. If you are gaining population, you want more population, yeah. <laughs> more representation. So that's kind of my big takeaway that's going to be the most difficult thing. Uh, how should people who come out prepare themselves um, for the impact that these hearings could have? Because this is a big deal because it has long-lasting effects. Well, I think it's really important to know your district and the things that usually kind of stick with everybody is just the the stories. My college is split in half. My husband can go outside and one foot is in one district and the other foot is in the other district. Um, those are the big takeaways for the whole committee and then you really have to know your district or the districts surrounding you and what particular thing you'd like to see fixed. So the legislative session, the next one, isn't for a year, but you're still holding hearings. Why do that now? Can you explain the importance of kind of preparing for, for this? Well, once we begin the legislative session, there just will not be enough time to hear from a state as large and diverse as ours. So we are making the rounds now to try to get that done. We have scheduled about um, 30 visits throughout the the state and once we you know gavel in in January you've got a hundred and fifty people ready to go <laughs> so we need to kind of have a heads up on what the state has told us now the um, you know the way that the legislature draws the uh, lines for these districts will have a big uh, kind of power play I guess for Republicans or Democrats how are you trying to make sure that this is as bipartisan a process as possible well, I make sure I sit by a Republican <laughs> on the right and a Democrat on the left. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> no, um, seriously, I really think that when um, the speaker put together the committee, he tried to put that into play. And right now we have a Republican majority and we have eight representatives that are Republican and seven that are Democrat. So I think that mix was designed to kind of shake it up. So far, have you been feeling like there is that camaraderie there? Is there a feeling of neutrality? Or is there still that feel of partisanship? Well, I mean, y you kind of always have both. I mean, but um, I think the camaraderie certainly outweighs the partisanship because nobody wants to repeat what they're doing in Washington, especially me. <laughs> so, um, but we know it will be a difficult process because this year there's a lot of anticipation that the Democrats will take over the, the House. And of course, we're working really hard to do that. But at the same time, uh, you have Republican members that are very important to the, the state of Texas, especially the rural communities. And not only, you know, their particular votes, but also their expertise. So. Um, I think it'll all get worked out in the wash. <laughs> and you being a longtime Austin councilwoman for um, many years before this, you know, what do you feel like the importance of that history and you being from Travis County being on this committee is? Oh, well, number one, I served for nine years and I left as the mayor pro tem, but I served nonpartisan. 
So I was elected in a city of 850,000 to a million as opposed to a district with, you know, 160, 180 maybe hitting that. So I'm just so much more um, in tune to representing a larger number of people. So that helps a lot with nonpartisanship discussion, dialogue, and decisions. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for much. having me. We know some of you are watching from the Dallas area and might be able to attend the redistricting committee hearings. Tuesday's hearing is in Plano at the Collin College Spring Creek Campus Conference Center. On Wednesday, the committee is at the southeast campus of Tarrant County College. The hearings start at 4 in the afternoon on both days.